Hello, my darling listeners. It's me, Fax Fivem, back with the facts, the facts, and nothing but the facts. I've been working on my long project recently. Effectively just me making an audiobook of Thunder on the Right by Alan Crawford. I was actually able to get into contact with the guy. It seems pretty interesting. I finished the first chapter of that audiobook. It was like 40 pages. It was a lot of reading and a lot of redos of the reading. Hey, hey, it was nuts. But for today, well, I think the title speaks the truth well enough. This is one of those things that kind of bugs me, you know? Seeing various, uh, well, community institutions just kind of crumble like this, uh, that crap ain't right, yo. But, well, let's get into this bad boy. Pastors are leaving their congregations after losing their churchgoers to QAnon by Sophia Ankle, published originally on March 14th, 2021 on Business Insider. On the morning of the Capitol riot, Vern Swigrina told his wife during a walk with their dogs, Something is going to happen today. I don't know what, but something's going to happen today. The Christian Reformed Church pastor from Michigan had been watching for months as some members of his congregation grew captivated by videos about the QAnon conspiracy theory on social media, openly discussing sex trafficking and Satan-worshipping pedophiles. He had watched as other spiritual advisors, including the self-proclaimed Trump prophet Mark Taylor, incorporated wild and dangerous QAnon beliefs into their sermons on YouTube, and as organizers of the Christian Jericho March gathered in Washington, D.C., days before the insurrection, urging followers to pray, march, fast, and rally for election integrity. So when hundreds of President Donald Trump supporters stormed the Capitol hours after his premonition, Swariga was shocked but not surprised. I think some of the signs had been there all along and it just came to a perfect storm. Swariga told Insider, the pastor said he had been worried about so-called Christian nationalism since Trump was elected in 2016. Neither Swaringa nor any of the other pastors interviewed for this story say who they voted for in 2016 or 2020. He became even more concerned when, in 2018, some older members in his congregation started sending him what he described as disturbing QAnon videos. When Swaringa brought these to the attention of his superiors, he said they were mostly dismissive, telling him they didn't know what QAnon was. But when the coronavirus pandemic hit last year, the problem grew larger and a lot more personal. Swearinga felt increasingly uncomfortable when a large part of his congregation dismissed the pandemic as a host. The 61-year-old pastor had been taking the pandemic very seriously, he said, partly because his wife was considered at risk. A bout of pneumonia in 2019 left her with permanent scarring in the lungs. It was at that point when I put my foot down and said, I'm not going to preach in front of a congregation that wants to sing and not wear masks, Swearinga said, but they still wanted me to preach in front of them without wearing a mask. He said the church offered him a plexiglass barrier to preach behind, but he felt it wouldn't make much of a difference in an enclosed space. We agreed to separate at that point, and so it felt pretty cordial at the time, Swearinga said, but I found out later that there were really hard feelings amongst the congregation, and many of them felt like I abandoned them. It was heartbreaking. Swaringa left the church in December after eight years of service. He now works part-time at the Kibi Christian Reformed Church in South Haven, 30 miles away from his original job. His new church has a mandatory mask rule. Outsized belief in QAnon among white evangelicals. Swaringa is not the only pastor to struggle with the rapid spread of conspiracy theories and misinformation in his congregation. A poll released in January 2021 by the Christian research organization Lifeway Research found that more than 45% of Protestant pastors said they had often heard congregants repeating conspiracy theories about national news events. Another survey by the conservative American Enterprise Institute found that more than a quarter of white evangelical respondents believed in QAnon and that three in five believed that President Joe Biden's win in the 2020 election was not legitimate. Those rates were the highest in any religious group. The trend has prompted hundreds of evangelical pastors and faith leaders to speak out. In February, more than 1,400 of them published an open letter condemning radicalized Christian nationalism and the rise of violent acts by radicalized extremists using 
the name of Christ, the Washington Post reported. Among them is Jared Stacy, a Southern Baptist used pastor from Virginia who ended up leaving the church altogether after QAnon and other conspiracy theories began to divide his congregation. He moved to Scotland in December, where he now studies theology at the University of Aberdeen. He told Insider that he left to create some space, adding that pastoring in 2020 was a struggle for many faith leaders. I do think that a lot of pastors are burdened right now and need a friend, Stacy said. It's not easy watching people that you've invested time in becoming radicalized so quickly in front of you. He said that while some people might say politics shouldn't be discussed in churches, there comes a point where refusing to talk politics is a false front for protecting the political sensibilities of your stakeholders. That is why there is a theological need to address what the Bible would describe as telling lies or having a false god, he added. But keeping up with the information online is not always easy, and Stacy worries that the church is falling behind in the race to bring Christian messages to a world that spends most of its time online. The church is going through the biggest information shift since the printing press, Stacy said. The road to recovery from QAnon. One person trying to use technology to reach more Christians who have been affected by QAnon is Derek Kubilas, the senior pastor of Uniontown United Methodist Church in Ohio. Kubilas runs the Crossover Q podcast, which offers healing for QAnon followers and family members from a Christian perspective. The pastor started the podcast after the Capitol riot and received a wide range of listeners, including former QAnon believers who have told him that the podcast has been part of their recovery. When I saw crosses being carried alongside QAnon banners and a noose as these folks marched on the Capitol, I just knew I had to do something, but from a Christian perspective. Kubilas told Insider. While some pastors, including Stacy and Swaringa, opted for private conversations with their congregants to warn against the dangers of misinformation, Kubilas does it publicly. In his podcasts, he debunks theories, speaks about how they're dangerous, and preaches about the importance of unity. Members of the clergy are expected to maintain a certain kind of distance from secular politics, both in order to preserve the unity of our congregation and to make sure that we don't unduly influence elections, Kubilas said. But I don't believe that QAnon is inherently political. It starts with politics, but these are people's lives in relationships that we're talking about. Kubilas is aware that the recovery from QAnon radicalization is by no means a short one, but he's hopeful that his efforts will bring Christians back home eventually. It takes a lot of courage, time, and patience, he said. But when you hear the stories of people who are being hurt in the families that are falling apart, you recognize that it is absolutely necessary. Honestly, what can I say other than this is just effed up? I mean, whatever one's opinion on religion, good or bad, it, this is just effed up. I mean, I don't know if you're listening to this in America, but in America, churches do have a long history of being not just religious institutions, but also community and mediating or maybe right, moderating institutions, as well as places of community and family and just to enjoy life in general. Now, I will, you know, I will also criticize organized religion. It has had its negative impacts. But at the same time, uh, well, when you think about it, religion is not really good or evil as much as it's a tool. And much like how a hammer can bang a nail into a wall and build something, it can also crack someone's skull open. Okay, I guess that's a that's a bit of a harsh dichotomy. Maybe it'd be better be like, a, you know, a hammer can, yeah, you know, it can uh, pound a nail into a wall to fix something. It can also be used to break a window. Yeah, okay, that's better. I'm going to keep the original in. <laughs> in hindsight, it's kind of funny. Well, funny in its own weird way. But... Yeah, honestly, this QAnon crap. I know this article is from last year, but it angers me, man. It angers me so much. <sighs> ah. ay, ay, ay. Well, thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. I need at least 100 subscribers to change my ugly URL, and it would be nice if I could do that soon. Please share this around and give me that internet dopamine rush. You can also follow me on Twitter at capital F, capital F, I V E U M. The rest are lowercase. You can also give me money on coffee, Ko fi, if you want to give me money for whatever reason. And of course, well, you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. I'm not your boss, I'm just Fax Fivem. And right now, I'm signing off. <laughs>